Because of the nature of the tragic events that have happened recently in Northern California, I wanted to bring you a few ideas to think about. Hey, it's Gary Peavy from the Wealth Design Group in beautiful Sacramento. I want to talk to you today about these tragic events that occurred just north of us, a hundred miles or so in the community of Paradise. As you know, thousands and uh, thousands of properties have been destroyed. Many people have lost their lives and thousands, thousands of people have been uprooted from what had been their everyday activity. So if that happened to you, would you be prepared? So let's think about some of the things that have occurred and how you can better position yourself financially from a financial planning standpoint, just in the event that something like this were to happen to you. So the first thing that we see has happened is people lost their properties, their homes, where they lived. What I find with many people that come into our office is that when you look at their property casualty insurance, the agent has really not done the best job for them. That's because most people tend to buy their property casualty insurance, the insurance on their cars, the insurance on their homes, based on price, and not really about what the full protection would be for them, okay? Because they want to get by by paying as little as possible because it'll never happen to them. Well, as we can see, there are 18,000 structures it happened to. So the first thing is this, do not be cheap on your property casualty insurance. Make sure that your agent is doing the right thing and getting you the kind of coverage you should really have. Because when it's gone, it's gone. Now, when the property was gone, what did people have to do? Now they've had to relocate. What does it take to relocate? Money. They had to have cash. They might have credit cards. So they put these relocation expenses on their credit card, but somehow they've got to pay. Now they're waiting for insurance to kick in and pay them something for their losses. Maybe the government comes in and helps support them in some fashion, but it's about cash. They've got to have cash, okay, and access to it. So now they lost their property, but what about if they actually worked in the community? Did they lose their job too? So now they're looking for a new job, They've got a time period where they're not gonna have any income. Maybe they get, get some unemployment or something like that for a period of time, but it's not enough. They've got to have cash. Access to cash in some fashion is what they've got to have, okay? So now they've lost their house, they've lost their job. What if they were injured? What if they didn't, you know, they, who didn't just lose their job, but they actually got hurt in some fashion. And it could just be stress because I'm sure there's lots of people that are going to be traumatically uh, impacted by these losses that are stressful to them and they can't go back and work. What have they done to protect themselves in the event this were gonna to happen to them? What does it require they have? Cash. You see, there's a recurring theme here that occurs. Now, let's assume they're able to take control and be able to fend for themselves best as possible. Where do they have their cash? Well, our experience is most people don't have too much sitting in the bank. And why? It isn't because they don't think it's a good place, because it's not getting the rate of return that they think they need to get on it. They forget that they have to have liquidity. So often people don't have much in savings. So where do they go? Maybe they go to their employer, they go get a 401k loan. Okay, so they borrow from their 401k because that's where they have the majority of their money. But unfortunately, 401k loans come with problems. So it isn't the best solution, okay? So what do we gotta have cash? Now, then the unthinkable occurs. What if you or one of your family members is the person that actually didn't make it out alive and you died from these traumatic events. What's the impact on those left behind? You, your income from your job isn't there. You know, the expenses all are there. All the things you did for your family unit that were so important 
now have to be handled by someone else. And that does take money. Somebody has to pay for that because you can't expect everybody to pick up all that you were doing. Maybe you've got some life insurance, and I hope you, if you were in that situation, you would have tons of life insurance. But that is the solution in that scenario. Life insurance is what creates the cash so that the family can continue on. You notice that the whole theme here is that we have to have access to cash. And where is the best place to store it? Well, in our office, majority of work we do with people, we want to either store it in the bank where it's safe or we, we have them store great deals of money in cash value life insurance. Because cash value life insurance is a great place to store wealth, to store cash for emergencies and for opportunities. So what I want you to do with this video is just think about it. If this were to happen to you, any one of those scenarios, have you taken care of it? You see, it happened to my family. My cousin lives in paradise. His mother lives there. His in-laws live there. And other friends of ours live there. And everything was destroyed. They're facing the same problems as all the other people. It touches home. And what we want to do is make sure that when you are in a position to prepare for it, that you do prepare for it. Much like going out on a boat, you better take the life preserver with you. What we want you to do is make sure that you've taken steps in your financial planning that will help you in that event that anything like this were to occur for you. I hope this is helpful. We hope that these kind of videos make you think and you're prepared if something like this were to ever happen. Join us for our other videos. Check out our YouTube channel. Thank you.